I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family. Peace, peace, peace. I'm so happy to be um, back with Happy Talks for another in, uh, exciting installment um, of Happy Talks. You know, let me just, you know, while we're waiting for everybody to come in, just shout out to the um, early birds. I tell you, um, you know what? Anytime I have Professor Small on, I mean, you guys just be waiting, waiting for that time to start. That's what's up. It's always a pleasure to sit down with with um, with Professor because we know we're about to be in school. We're going to learn some stuff. Um, I want to just say a little quick shout out to um, to Yo Folks Three. I see Rasha Mella up is in, is, is in the house. Nemesis X, um, Leo. I haven't seen Leo and Strawberry 1955 for like a minute, and we got Michelle Jewell in there. Now I ain't seen Michelle. I ain't seen you in a minute. So it's really nice to um, to see you guys up in the chat. Um, and I see L I T living in truth. That's right. We live in, in truth, um, especially with this new moon that's at, what, 536 tomorrow, the new Leo moon. <laughs> uh, so it's all about truth and setting your intentions. So, uh, you know, before we get started, um, oh, and there's Alan Boy. How are you guys doing? Wendell? Yes, Dallas, Texas. That's what's up, um, Wendell. Uh, Wendell Delaney and Chad. All right, uh, family. So first... First, business is business. You guys need to like this video and um, share it if you can with at least three other people um, so that we can get this information out. You guys know how these little algorithms work. Um, I am going to uh, uh, first start talking about the newsletter. So family, if you are not subscribed to our newsletter, because a lot of times, sometimes like I actually see people on the street and we're talking and, you know, they're asking me about stuff. I'm like, are you signed up to the newsletter? They're like, oh, I've been watching Happy Talks since 2020. I was like, but are you signed up to the newsletter? <laughs> so I need for you guys, if you are not signed up to the newsletter, just go to happyfilm.com. You're going to hit the tab that says get connected. You put your email address in there and we will add you onto the list because a lot of times we actually send out emails about stuff before we have a chance to do a happy talks about it or before we have a chance to put it on our social media. So it's important um, that if you, you know, uh, you know, if you really want to know what's going on right when it's happening is that you're signed up for um, the newsletter. Super, super important. Also, okay, let me just give a shout out to everyone who has been taking advantage um, uh, of the hoppy clearance sale. Okay. Cause we are getting ready to, you know, have some new merchandise. And so we are pricing everything in the happy store to sell and to go. Oh, there's, um, Lorenzo small, you know, he, he and his wife are going to travel with us, um, next year, but family getting back to the hoppy clearance sale, go on to happyfilm.com. Okay. And look at the merchandise. Everything is priced uh, you know, to sell so we can make room for some new stuff. All right. And also when you guys purchase, um, you know, anything from Hoppy, we circulate the dollar more than we, it stays in the happy family for more than six hours. Okay. So it's very important that, um, you know, that you guys, um, support so that we can support our, um, all of our vendors look just like us. So it's super important that we're able to, um, to do that and through your cash apps, through you guys, um, you know, purchasing merchandise, all of that, that goes towards the, um, the small army of people <laughs> that we have under us. So um, family, please, um, please, please, please support if you can. Okay. Also, so the newsletter, the merchandise, now you guys know what I'm about to talk about next. Okay. So in February, we are um, getting ready to go uh, to Egypt again. Now, Akat Tours has been going for over 25 years to Egypt. So, you know, we're not new to this little rodeo here. But this, this one, 
this trip is going to be really exciting. It's exciting for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, every time I go, and I haven't gone, you know, as many times as my colleague uh, Taki has gone, or as many times as uh, Professor James Small. But every time I go, I learn something, and I think they would probably agree uh, with that statement. Every time you go, there's something different and something new to to not only see but to experience. And so this trip that we're doing in February, and it's February 16th to the 25th. Um, and so you guys have six months to pay. Let me just throw that out there. Okay. I ain't trying to be in nobody's pocketbook, but I am saying that, you know, we have really good um, payment plans that can work for anybody. Um, you know, if, if you are really committed to going, we, we can uh, help you to make that happen. But this trip, this is going to be, uh, this is the, the, the uh, discover the origins of economics in Egypt uh, trip. And all of the places that we visited and we filmed for Hoppy, the, the documentary, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna check out those places. But we're not just going to like ooh ah at the beautiful monuments and see the beautiful sunrise and sunset, but we're going on a mission. And it's really to lay down this foundation of economics and the and how we as brown people. Um, we are the ones who created the constructs of economics of, of what we know now, you know, um, of how the whole world functions. It started with us and it started in Egypt. And so we're going to make sure that everyone that comes with us understands that. And so it's not, you know, it's not just about selling up the Nile, which we are going to do. And it's cool because we actually have our own ship. We're not like our own hoppy hoppy ship, but we're the only people on the ship. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're going to have all types of festivities on there. We have classes. We have Dr. Uh, Georgina Falou that's going to come. And, you know, if you guys have experienced her from one Africa, you know how she came with a suitcase full of papers and made people sign up for their um, non-for-profits right then and there. She was not playing around. She wasn't like, oh, when we get back to New York, no. She had groups of people and they were actually putting in their paperwork the same, you know, um, during the, the same time. So she's gonna be there teaching some economic um, lessons for us and also getting people started. And she actually wants you, if you're coming on the tour, if you have an idea for a business, she wants you to bring it so that you can legitimize that business while you're in Egypt with her. Um, and we also have Dr. David Anderson. He's going to be, um, you know, talking to us about his economic prowess. We've had both of these uh, fine um, scholars on our show thus far. You can go to Happy Talks on our YouTube page and you can check out what they had to say. And also we have the culture man. We have Infudishi Juhutimis, one of six Infudishis. He's going to be also on this trip as one of our tour guides. Um, and if you've ever traveled with uh, Infudishi, you understand how he gets it in. I swear, the first time we went to one of those, um, one of the, one of the temples, I was like, I think the ancestors are coming off the wall because that's how powerful uh, Infudishi is when he's um, really talking about and explaining, you know, um, our culture and our history to us. And so, um, and then we have. We also have some other, you know, like little surprise things happening. And then we also have this young brother, this conscious rapper, you know, um, J. Mar Milton. And if, again, if you were at the Happy Day of Black Excellence, J. Mar got it in. Okay. So he's going to be there, musical performance, you know, so this is going to be a really nice trip. So you will have fun like you're on the Tom Joyner cruise, but you will also have history like you're sitting in class with Professor Small, with Dr. Um, Jeffries, uh, with Dr. Oba Tashaka. You're going to have all of that. So it's a nice mixture. And so family, if you can make this happen, um, you know, really try hard. It's, it's, it's important to, um, to be there and not just, you know, like for us, so you can say you saw these people or did whatever, but really for yourself. And Professor Small will talk a little bit about that more. But, um, you know, I will say if you can um, make this, you know, you can call it whatever you want to, a Kwanzaa gift to yourself, a birthday gift, just a, a self-love gift, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> call it whatever you have to, but really try to make it. And you can go to iCatTours.com. Uh, uh, to get more information and put down your deposit, because this is the other piece. Once the, depo once the ship fills up, 
we're not going to be able to bring any other people. We're not going to have other groups. When we went last year, we had multiple groups. No, it's going to be one group. So everyone that can fit on that ship is going. And so if you even think that you're going to go, I suggest that you just put down your deposit, um, fill out the, um, the registration form on our website and get started to a beautiful life experience. Um, so that's that for that for now. We're going to come back to that, though. OK. Um, so, you know, without further ado, I'm just going to bring in my man because this is, you know, Professor Small is all right by me. He was the first hobby member I actually met. I think I met him first and then I met um, Dr. Uh, Leonard Jeffries. So without further ado, this is Professor James Small. Hey, Professor. Hey, sister. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know, well, let me just say a little quick shout out to little Asar who's in the um in the chat. What's up, Asar? Asar, hey, brother, Asar let me stop. Asar, you need to be in touch with me. Yo, you heard it right there. You ain't you have professor's number. If not, text me, I'll give it to you. Um As, um Asar was with us last year um mm -hmm. in, in Egypt as well. So um, so yeah. How many, first of all, how are you doing, Professor? I mean, you've been gone traveling. We haven't seen you in a minute. I know you've had a lot of stuff happening in your family. So how, how are you feeling? No, I'm good. Um, we're just back from a fantastic uh, tour in Ghana, 15 days. Mm. And I've told some of my people it's probably the best uh, tour I've had in Africa. Mm. Yeah. This was a group of the most beautiful people. Mm, I love that. Elders to, I think, an eight-year-old. We had three kids on, on the tour. Um, we had Zion. Uh, we had Whisper. And that's the young guy. Oh, I love that name. You said Whisper? Yeah, little sister. And every morning she saw me from the time she met me, she came and gave me a hug and a kiss. Good oh, morning, God. Professor. Just, these were the children of Sister Mashira, who's traveled with us multiple times. Okay. Ghana and who has since opened a chicken farm. She and her husband, Art. Art was on the trip too. He's an African-Mexican, the most beautiful brother you want to meet. Um, her father went on the trip as well. It was a fantastic trip. Um, we had some elders who can walk beside me and then we had these youngsters and everything in between. Mm. And everybody just enjoyed themselves. I may have been a little had a little too much in the tour. I mean, because we went every day, you know, all day yeah. on the road from Canopy Walk to museums, to outdoor museums, to riverside restaurants, to mm. uh, boating on, and, and dancing. We had a live band for four hours, right? On, on, on the Volta Lake on a beautiful day. Um, it was fantastic. And, and we were with the local Ghanaian community, those who had come home to vacation, those who were just having an outing with their children, uh, the Abori Gardens, uh, the Botanical Gardens on, on Founders Day, where thousands and thousands of families were just out picnicking, playing ball and having fun. So it was a beautiful trip. It was like going home to Africa trip, you know. Mm, going home to Africa trip. Okay. <coughs> Yeah. And you're now getting ready and prepared to go to Kemet. We are. And, you know, you gave us a, um, I put it, um, you know, we're going to, we, we have uh, something that you said, you actually dictated it to me when we were in the first day in Egypt. And mm -hmm. so we typed it up and we, um, and I gave it to everyone on the trip. Um, and it was like, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell anybody. You have to come to the trip to get it, to get what you said. Oh, <laughs> you right. Come on the trip. Yeah. Because um, we, yeah. it's in the front of our book. And you talk about, you know, you ask people questions in terms of why they, you know, why are they here, what they're supposed to be doing. And so mm -hmm. I guess, you know, that's, I'm going to ask you that question. Like, why should we visit Egypt? And why must we like look at this as not only just a, a ordinary trip, vacation, but an investment in ourselves? Right. You know, I turn away from Kemet for a minute because Arab racism 
Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was just too much to bear. And then I had to remember Anglo white America racism was with me every day and I live here. And this trip that happy and, and what happy is actually different from all of the other tours. Some of the tours are going for religious spiritual reasons. They're trying to revitalize the ancient comedic religious system. Mm -hmm. Some are going like ASCAC for <clears throat> intellectual and academic reasons. They want to study the history and interpret the, the Medunetia, and they want to be able to come back and teach in the classrooms. Some is going like Baba Kwesi's group or Tony's group to talk about the greatness and exalt the greatness and to further the teachings of Dr. Ben who introduced us back into Kemet along with others. Um, but what Happy has done is to produce a document on economics that presents a blueprint and a set of patterns for black people anywhere in the world to begin to reconstruct and rebirth the economic system wherever they live based on the model of the Happy River and what it allowed for us to do in ancient Kemet. It is a very scientific process. No one has presented such a dissertation as an accompaniment to taking a tour of the Nile Valley. The happy film and the happy movement have been about restoration of black economic integrity wherever we find ourselves in the world. Absolutely. And it used Kemet as the primary model for how you do that. You've got to watch the film and you can't just watch it one time. Because first, it's kind of like historical entertainment. And then you go back and you listen to it. You go like, wow, this oh, is instruction. This is blueprint. This is concept, ideas, and principles that I can apply to the streets of Detroit, Chicago, Oakland, New York, without begging anybody else for anything, but just taking a piece of that $2 trillion that we will spend this year and organize it in the appropriate manner as Happy is suggesting with all of its great scholarship. I mean, the scholarship in the film is extraordinary just by itself. Yeah. But the, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that that scholarship leaves us with frightens people about Happy that you're not just visiting, but you come to create tools of transformation. And if you can transform economically, you can transform socially, culturally, spiritually, and politically. And everyone understands that. Economics is the foundation of civilization, you know? Yeah. In partnership with the African family, because without the family, you don't get any development. But without the happy river, you do not get the economic phenomena that created the civilization. The whole world is still trying to imitate and emulate the mm -hmm. Kemetic Nile Valley civilization. So well said. So well said, Professor. Well, with all that, I'm telling people, send in your deposit. Go, in there. <laughs> Go with happy. Yes. Send your donations mm -hmm. into happy. Shop at the Happy Store, because Happy is not just trying to do a trip. They're trying to create a movement for economic development in the Black community worldwide. And they need the resources to do this. 100%. So we need you. Do yeah. the Cash App and whatever apps they got going to bring cash. <laughs> yes, we have, you know, yeah, then we got the we got the happy film, dollar sign happy film. Um, mm -hmm. we got super chat. If you're on um if you're on uh YouTube, you can hit us up on the super chat. If you're on Facebook, we have you can buy the um the stars, um, you know, like uh professor said, the um the cash app, and also if you just go to our website, we have a GoFundMe, you can also um you know contribute there, and you know, really. 
uh, you have to understand that all of our money, because in the film, we, you know, in Hoppy, we say, uh, uh, Ken, um, Kenneth Kelly, the president of um, Independence Bank in Detroit, I see some um, Detroiters oh, mm -hmm. Detroit, um, are, um, up in the chat, but he says, you know, that the dollar stays in our community about uh, six hours. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we definitely spend our money with our people. And so family, you know, like anything you can do, we are very much appreciative. Right. Yeah. And it, it, it's really important because you, we're the $2 trillion people. We are the wealthiest African population in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, the wealthiest populations are those on the continent with the wealth in the ground. But most of that is being stolen by Europe. And we're going to talk about that a little later. But those who have $2 trillion in their hand, that's mm -hmm. the North American African population. Native of Africans from the Caribbean, from the continent, and from the United States, with those from the United States being 90% of that population. And we have $2 trillion that we are giving to our enemies on a daily basis mm. because we are unconscious of how economics should work. And that's why you need to watch the happy film. It tells you how economics should work so that you don't have to beg any other community for anything. Yeah. And you know, yeah, and, and also, you know, with, with the people, I mean, you know, Dr. Uh, Falou, <laughs> uh, Dr. Georgina hmm. Falou, you know, hmm. uh, with her and with uh, Dr. David Anderson, given practical, you know, information on how you can make your economics really work for you, you know, it's really a, a well-rounded, um, you know, trip. And so, yeah, family. And I think somebody in the chat was asking, we're traveling February 16th to the 25th, um, 2024. And um, you can go to iCatTours.com to, uh, you know, to, to put your deposit in. And I see uh, Takesha is in the house. She is also, um, you know, this is going to be her first tour. She can't wait. She's been rolling with us. We met her in Detroit. She's been rolling with us since. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be nice. No, it's an important trip because yeah. Kimmet isn't just looking at history. It's looking at high science at its highest point in every category, medicine, mm -hmm. botany, agriculture, architecture, building, every aspect that a civilization needs you'll see it at its zenith yes. in Kemet. And so it stands as this model for you. But none of that would have happened in Kemet had not the happy river flowing out of Ethiopia, flowing out of Uganda with the White Nile and Ethiopia with the Isfet Falls and the Blue Nile, flowing even before that from Lake Nyanza, who the West called Victoria, flowing into Nyanza is the waters of the Congo and Angola. All of that water eventually makes it into Kemet to form the Happy River. Mm. So there's almost a nature spirit phenomena nature that's spirit. having a relationship okay. with the African peoples in that valley. And so we talk a lot about spirituality, <clears throat> a lot about ancestry, but I don't think some of us take it seriously. You know, I take it seriously. I could snap my finger and help Sister Felicia find a glad pair of glasses she had been looking for for two days. You knew, I know you weren't going to let me. I, you I know what? Because you got to know what power really is. And you know what? Let me tell you, that was going to actually be a question of mine because I wanted mm -hmm. to um, ask you that. You know, it's like you are, um, when you talk about, you have coined the phrase African sacred sciences, right? Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's so funny. I have a really good friend of mine and she'll, she's telling me about something, something, something. She's like, yeah, and I told them about the African sacred I was like, how she know about the African sacred sciences? So I want to ask you, you know, how do you, you know, because sometimes, sometimes like when you're, you're talking about it, I, maybe some people feel like it's kind of like, like a theory. How do you how do you make African sacred sciences practical, like in your life? African sacred science has never been a theory. Mm -hmm. It has always been a fact because African sacred science is nature itself. 
It is cosmology itself. All our ancestors did was to interpret it to us. What we are calling sacred science is our understanding of nature, our understanding of food, our understanding of water, our understanding of air, our understanding of plants, of animals. That whole ecological laboratory that we live in that's the sacred science and the cosmology that pours this light energy into it. Our ancestors, when they said Oludumari, they were talking in the Yoruba language, they said Oludumari to mean the supreme creator of humans. And I qualify that that way because not a single African language have a name for the supreme being. Mm. It's impossible to name something whose boundaries you can't know. Exactly. Okay? exactly. Yes. They have a name for the powers of the Supreme mm -hmm. Being. The Supreme Being is not a person. It is the totality of everything. It's everything. That's the knowledge about the totality of everything is African sacred science yeah. that knowledge that our ancestors have saved in the language medunetra is not just the language it is a vehicle that carries the wisdom of a people intergenerationally mm. understand that yes Write it down, girl, because you ain't gonna hear it no place else. No, you know what? How it's you know I just grab my mother? Mother yeah. Afar may be the only other person I know that comprehends that. Is his writing is so spiritually pointed in terms of the sacred science. Oh yeah, you have to read Asar's book slowly to make sure you're yeah. understanding what's going on. Yes. Because, um, yes. Yes. So when we're talking about traveling with happy. It's not just the trip. Yeah. You know, it's the journey into the subconscious of the Af African ancestry. Mm -hmm. oh, it's a journey true. into the subconscious of African ancestry. Say it again. A journey into the subconscious of African ancestry. Because we don't truly understand who the ancestors are. There is no dead people ever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We just shared ourselves, but the we never go anywhere. My mother and father gave birth to me. They gave birth to themselves. My grandparents gave birth to my mother. Father gave birth to my mother and father thus gave birth to me. My great, great parents gave birth to my great, great parents and my grandparents and my mother and father. They all gave birth to me. So I am all of those ancestors encapsulated. I am the ancestor I pull libation to. Mm, yes. You know, listen to me so people really get it. I am the ancestor I pour libation to. The ancestor we talk about is you in the time before this time. Learn history, get rid of the mystery, restore your memory, and you'll remember that time before this time and then you have power to find eyeglasses. Yeah, okay. You know what, Professor? Yes. We were late because I could not find my glasses. I was like, I won't be able to see. <laughs> and Professor said some magical words, and then I, I found them. That's what he's going to keep talking about throughout this whole, two days whole in interview. Two days he searched for these glasses. <laughs> yes. But... Remember the key things, the key elements, mm -hmm. ancestors who built Kemet because of the Happy River ecological phenomena that produce the economic possibility for our ancestors, that produce land to plant crop, that produce a river that could feed fish, that could create a fishing industry, that could feed populations far, far away from the Happy Valley, that produced the necessity 
for boat builders that produced the necessity for storing and maintaining the grain that was harvested in its abundance, that produced the craftsmen to build houses for workers. I mean, the economics just bloomed like a lotus and grow, and every leaf mm -hmm. had a responsibility to every petal. And so we need to understand we live in nature. We live in nature. We are nature. Well, our bodies are made up of over 401 minerals, all found in nature. Okay. When we eat any plant, we eat dirt. What is dirt? The minerals that make up the planet. Right? So we are the planet. We are nature. There's nothing that lives in nature, a component of which we don't have in our bodies. Even the poisons that will kill you if you get it in abundance. Mm. That's very true. So our ancestors understood this and they broke it down into a science. So when they talk about a nature, they're not talking about a God. I don't know how we got there following white people saying <laughs> the Neturu are gods. Uh, Osar is a God. No, stop it. They're not gods. They're expressions of aspects of the divine totality essence being manifest in the ecology we find ourselves and have the possibility through wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be brought to manifestation within ourselves. Absolutely. And then the union of the two. Understanding African sacred sciences on our part is the biggest fear the white man has. Mm. That we will realize that we are the divine having the human experience that there's only one existence and all we are are aspects of that existence. If we were clear that there's only one existence and we as aspects of that existence understand necessity for psychic unity, we can end the white mess overnight. Absolutely. You know, speaking, speaking of the white mess, um, <laughs> so, so I'm just going to ask you, you know, just kind of some things that's happening right now in the news. But the first thing I want to ask you about is, um, you know, this uh, event that happened in Montgomery, Alabama. What are your thoughts about what happened? Simply, God's having a human experience. Wherever have you seen white people attacking a singular black man? Mm. And that black man was standing up and fighting for himself. And then other black men and women saw it and said, oh, hell no. They said, hell they, no. They didn't call the police. They ran there to kick behind. And, and swam and swam. This young boy. Oh, my God. He, he was 16. He was a little skinny thing. We go like, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. This yeah. is how I'm supposed to be responding. This yeah. is how a man responds. This is how an African be. Mm. Mm. The whole world. Let me tell you something. That occasion on that wharf in Alabama had scared the hell out of America. Because they go like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. They ran to help him. No, they didn't just run to help him. They went and beat the hell out of the white men exactly. and women who was messing with him. Exactly. exactly. And you know, the, when, when I first, somebody had sent me the video the first time, and I, all I saw was the black man. I, saw, I was like, I can't watch this because I cannot keep watching it. And I think... You know, um, it, it does something to your psyche when you keep seeing black people get beat down. So I was like, I can't watch this. And he was like, no, 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 just watch it to the end. Watch it to the end. I was like, ah, ah. I'm like, okay. So I'm looking at it. And then when I when I saw the man running down and then the, I didn't know he was a young boy at the time in the river, I, literally tears was in my eyes because I was like, yes. And, you know, and what was interesting was afterwards, I mean, okay, the memes have been off the chain. Oh my mm -hmm. God, it's, it shows our creativity to a whole new level. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wanted that, to go that back. That chair has become enshrined. Oh, God. And I was like, I was like, I have four yeah. of them at my house. Like, I was, yeah, I, you know, there's the memes, the man with the T-shirt right after it happened. But this is the other piece I was going to, um, you know, ask you about. So, you know, there was like some, you know, some black folks who who had commentary. You know, they were just like, I don't know why everyone's so happy. This chair is not going to um, serve. Uh, it's not going to set. It's not going to, um, you know, um, uh, make it so that we don't have, uh, you know, like, you know, that all black people have money now. It's not going to do anything. It's just, you know, it was a fight that happened. It's not changing anything. You know, and I was just like, I, I, I just, I don't even understand where that type of response comes from. No, well, you have dead consciousness and living consciousness. Mm. Most dead consciousness comes from fear mm. and intimidation based on ignorance. The whole world know that that behavior on the part, especially of African men mm -hmm. in Alabama on that wharf, have changed the trajectory of the entire friggin' world. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. they don't know when that's going to happen again on Wall Street, yeah. on Broadway, in, in, in Arkansas, in Chicago. Yeah. When will that spirit, mm. and when did that spirit grow into being? I've always said, and you've heard me a hundred times, that this generation that you represent and below you is the best we've ever produced. It is the most powerful we ever produced. It is the wealthiest we've ever produced. It's the more educationally trained we've ever produced. And they are the most conscious we've ever produced. Yes, a lot of attention was given to the consciousness in the 60s of the Black Panther Party and the Nation of Islam and the Republic of New Africa, but we numbered under 500,000. You and your consciousness a millions and the world know it and it's not just here in north america i see it in africa i see it in the caribbean where the young people are saying i'm not giving up my homeland i'm not running away to somebody else's country to find what i want somehow it's got to happen here yeah. and that's what you see happening in niger burkina faso mm -hmm. and mali and guinea and those other Francophone slaves like Quatera and Cote d'Ivoire, the ancestors is gonna take you out. It's gonna be coupeted boulecai for you. They're gonna cut up your head and burn your dwellings to the ground. If you dare send an Equa force into Niger, like we told you before, if one of our soldiers died, there'll be fires in the sky. Mm. I told you die, black world, make fire in the sky. You know exactly what I mean. Wherever you find the enemy, take them out, take them down. Like any good soldier should do. Mm. Your responsibility as a human being, if they dare to go in Niger, in Ghana, you're listening to me, in, in, in Nigeria, in South Africa, in Zambia, in Trinidad, in Jamaica, in New York, in South Carolina, we will not stand for it. We will find a way to hurt you. Mm. We will find a way to hurt you. Do you hear me? Family right Most there. people are simply saying to the world, how dare these ignorant Negroes that make up the economic, you know, ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states, how dare you even consider sending military into those countries to fight young black men who decided they did not want to be robbed by mm -hmm. France anymore. You now become the French enslavers, slave catcher. Because that's what you're being, that's what your behavior says. Nigeria, you have a big army. Okay. Those yeah. young people have God of ancestry mm -hmm. on their side and they will tear your army down. You couldn't beat a little ragtime group called Boko Haram. Yes, Boko Haram. Y'all remember them? They kidnapped those girls and raped all of those babies. Yeah. Right? You know Boko Haram, Haram was financed by France? Did you know that? Mm. And when the Nigerian army under um, Goodlock Jonathan brought in mercenaries that was about to defeat and destroy them, 
America stepped in and told, good luck, Jonathan, and the president followed him, stop, do not destroy. Why didn't America let them destroy Boko Haram? Oh, you don't get this kind of news over here, do you? Mm -mm. But you need to get it. You need to understand. There was no terrorists there. They created them. They trained them. All of the soldiers that have pulled all these coups was trained by America. Mm. Ah, but the mm. brothers weren't stupid. They weren't stupid. They're not U.S. assets. That's a mistake. You need to study the history of Islam in West Africa. You need to study the history of the family structure in West Africa, especially in the so-called 14 Francophone states. You need to understand the Moranaba and his civilization in Burkina Faso. You need to understand what Thomas Sankara had put in place before he was assassinated. You need to study, not just watch a news clip and try to reach a conclusion. History will erase the white man's mystery and you'll be able to make a proper analysis on what's going on economically. When France, who had taken over that part of Africa as a result of the Berlin Conference, when it was forced out in the 67, France came up with another enslaving process that said, you have to put 50% of your asset in French banks every year. And if you borrow any of your assets to use in your country, you have to pay interest on it. How the shit is that? Mm. France said, we're going to create a, a, a money called a SIFA that the 14 nations that we once ruled, this will be a point of unity for you. And what was supposed to be some positive unity was a way to allow France, the franc in France and the euro to control the monetary value of those 14 African states. Even further, they, they create a central bank for the SIFA. Okay. But yet France, France has veto power on all decisions made in the African Central Bank of the 14 Francophone states. You want to know why those young men took over the government? Why? Because they wanted to get rid of the puppet corruptors, the puppet collaborators masquerading as democratic leadership while continuing French colonialism in Africa. And for any of those little thugs masquerading as democratic leaders in ECOWAS, you're a bunch of thugs, you're a bunch of uninformed criminals. If you move against Mali, if you move against Niger, if you move against Burkina Faso, you will have to fight Guinea, you will have to fight Mali, you will have to fight Burkina Faso, and all of us, us in the Western world who are progressive thinkers who will stand up in every way we can to let you know you've made a mistake. So, you know, Professor, can you just back up for a minute? Can you just tell everybody what, what the role of EQUAS is? EQUAS. Uh, e ECO ECOWAS. 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 Yeah, it's, the, it's, 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 it's a, an economic arrangement mm -hmm. of a number of states in West Africa. And under that arrangement, they agreed that they would come to the aid of any fellow government if they were overthrown. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if your fellow government is, 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 is continuing and promoting and facilitating French colonial dominance and economic control over the resources of Africa, they should be kicked out of government. They should be put in front of a firing squad and, and to, for them to behave in that manner in today's world. Mm. where France don't have a single natural resources of its own, is living like they're in paradise while you can't even feed your children. France take the uranium from Niger. Niger is one of the biggest uranium producers in the world. America get almost one third of its uranium from Niger, right? And so France is able to run its nuclear power plants in Europe and keep Paris and Lorenz and all the others lit, and the people in Niger can't even get electricity? What kind of shit is that? That's insanity. And any government that was tolerating that need to be overthrown and put in the garbage can of history where they belong. So I support these young men. I'm not hung up on militarism or whether, I don't care whether they're in the army or whether they're 
capturing animals for dinner in the swamp. They mm. made a decision to break away from France's colonial dominance and to remove the French collaborators and puppets from power who was doing nothing. You, they were still going along with, we have to give 50% of our resources every year and put it in the French bank. Are you crazy? They're still going along with saying, we cannot make any decision in our central bank that is supposed to control the CIFA that France don't have veto power over. They're still paying a debt like France forced Haiti to pay. Pay me for my enslaved people you took from me into freedom. Do you hear me? They're telling France is saying, you got to pay me for all the paved roads I left. You have to pay me for all the schools I built. You, have, you didn't build none of those for Africans. You built them for yourself. Off of our natural resources. Right? So study, people, please. Study. You know, I served in the American military. Do I look like a collaborator? You served in the American military. Do you look like a collaborator? My dad served in the American mil military, and he was a hardcore left-wing labor leader here in this city. My brother served in the military, and all of them was involved either in the Nation of Islam or, or in the Malcolm X movement. So let's not get things twisted. Exactly. Let's study and see what the situation really is. Because any force, ECOWAS, if you can send a force into Niger, where the hell is your force going into Congo, cleaning up that mess that the white people are doing there? Exactly. Okay? Exactly, yeah. Where is your force in the Sudan? America, that, that rapid deployment force that attacked the government was trained by America. Mm -hmm. And now they're talking about power sharing because people try to break away from America and Europe dominance. They sick their military dogs on them. So we got to study Africa, give up this foolishness about we, 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 we're just Americans or we're born in America or we were here. Where'd you come from? You grew up out of the damn ground? Whether you came here on the slave ship or you came here on the Malian Empire ship or whether you migrated or swam across the damn Atlantic, you came from Africa. That is mother. That is father. Let's stop getting it twisted and acting stupid because we are cowards and we are afraid to take on the responsibility of African liberation. So we're going to go in some little corner talking about how we just Americans. Yeah. We just belong here. You're a bunch of slaves. Wake up. Mm. And that's why I love the happy movement because the happy movement and the happy film that explains the foundation and the movement talks about how to free yourself from slavery economically, politically, culturally, spiritually, intellectually. If somebody touched the hair of one African man or woman, be it in Guyana, Trinidad, Jamaica, Niger, mm -hmm. Ghana, they should, you should feel like they've touched your hair. And if you don't feel like that, there's something mentally wrong with you. Exactly. You exactly. need to get it healed. Um. So, I hope that's not too harsh. I said I wasn't going to be harsh tonight at all. It's going to be like, Whoa. yeah, okay. Well, that's out the window. Okay, that's out the window. Out the window. And they're real cool. So, but, if one of our soldiers died, there will be fire in the sky. If one of our soldiers died, there will be fires in the sky. And if you don't know what that means, you better go do some research. Mm. So we're gonna just it's a quick little break because I want to ask you about um, about um, Niger and Sudan um, family. Um, if you could please make sure you are liking and sharing this video, um, and our cash app is right there, dollar sign Happy Film. Thank you um, for uh, everyone that's been contributing. You know, um, I, I tell you, more than six hours, it stays in a happy community with all of our vendors that we use. So thank you, thank you, thank you um, for your contributions. Um, we have our next uh, uh, trip to Egypt. It's February 16th to the uh, 25th. You can head over to um, iCatTours.com. Uh, Let me get it up on the screen. 
right there um, and get more information. And like Professor Small said, uh, put your deposit in today. <laughs> yes. uh, go on this trip, get your deposit in, don't wait. Yeah, go on, have okay. fun learning how to become African again. Mm. Because the war for the African mind is just beginning. Learn. And unless we change the mind, you will not have any serious change in the behind. And get that straight. If you don't change the mind, you're not going to change the behind. You can wear all the African cloth you want. You can get all the, 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 the dreadlock hairstyle you want to do. You can cut your head bald. But if you don't change what's behind these walls, you're going to be in trouble. And the only way you're going to change this is to get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Or knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in that order. Knowledge is the gathering of the information, understanding the information you gather. Wisdom is the appropriate application of the knowledge that you've derived at. And so we need to be clear that we need to know what's going on in Niger. Get busy yeah. studying the country's history. We need to know what's going on in Mali because the brothers took over the government in Mali before that. And they told the French, go to hell. We're not giving you a single penny anymore. They told the French troops and the French citizen, get out of our country. Leave us to ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we fall on our face, let us fall on our face. Leave us alone. So, um, so Professor Small, let's just start there with Niger and Sudan. Can you tell us what's going on there? In Sudan, the yeah. government of Sudan. And Niger. And Niger. Go ahead. Let's stop with Sudan. Okay. The government of Sudan was about to grant the right to the Soviet Union to build a major military base in the Sudan. The American attack dogs, attack dogs, who was this rapid deployment force that America trained under the guise we're going to help the Sudanese government in case you have any external issues, they had their attack dogs attack the government so that the government would not signed the treaty with Russia to build that base. We did not even got the BRICS yet and what that whole economic configuration is about, but we're going to mention it with the little I know about it. In Niger, you know what they upset about in Niger? What? You remember, after Russia declared war in, in whatever that little country name, but the war is not with that little country. Ukraine. Ukraine. Mm -hmm. But that's a war within NATO. NATO is supplying the technology, the, the machinery, the armament, and they have American and NATO soldiers in there running all of that equipment and training these other people. So he's at war with NATO and America, and Russia is winning. Okay? And so they blew up the pipeline that takes the natural gas to Europe. And they got most European people to tell Russia, we're not going to buy your natural gas. So now they got a problem with Europe. Europe is running short of natural gas. So they were running a pipeline across Niger, Niger, coming out of Nigeria, going to Libya and to Europe to supply it with natural gas. And the troops in Niger says, no, we're cutting the pipeline off. And that's why they draw us in a tither right now. Ooh. And they're not even telling the world about that pipeline, are they? Have you heard any mention of the pipeline? I haven't heard any mention of the pipeline. Yeah. Major pipeline being built from Nigeria to Europe to bring natural gas to replace what they lost from the Soviet Union. And now Niger is saying, nah, that ain't happening. And that's why they're in a tight, notwithstanding that the French is in a tight, because they're going to lose all that revenue from Niger, Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and they always lost it from Guinea. When the French cut that deal back in 67, right, mm -hmm. to, to, to um, pull out their, by the way, French have over 300,000 troops in Africa. They never left. There's more French troops in Africa than there is in France. Tell you that again, people. 300,000 French troops is on the ground in Africa. 
in different of the 14 countries. More French troops are in Africa than there is in France. Do you hear me? Understand what's going on. Learn history and get rid of the mystery. All right? And so this thing that Niger just did followed the thing that um, Mali did and Burkina Faso did. France have killed at least 12 African leaders, assassinate elected officials, at least 12, at least two of the leaders of, 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 of Togo, and responsible for killing Sankara, a beautiful young brother, and Burkina Faso. They've killed leaders in Mali. They've killed leaders in Chad. They've killed leaders in Niger. Study history, people. I know because these were French speaking areas, we didn't have a close relationship to them. And many of them are Muslim areas, so we didn't have a close relationship to them because we were caught up in our Christian, Anglo, English speaking colonial minds here in North America. But let's open ourselves up to see our brothers and sisters in all the spaces that they reside as a result of colonialism. And you'll begin to see what's really going on you know you'll begin to understand who is really the culprit in africa it isn't corrupt african officials as many of the people we're calling corrupt african officials these are people who are captured mentally and psychologically and religiously trained in america trained in france and sent back to run the governments at home and they've murdered or overthrown the legitimate leadership to put these collaborators in place and these young soldiers are saying, enough is enough. Enough is enough. That's what you see going on. So, um, okay, so what are your thoughts on the military leadership that took control um, of Niger's plans to arrest and prosecute um, deposed President um, Mohamed Bazoum for high treason and undermining um, state security? What's your thoughts on that? If that's what they have to do, I'm with them. Those mm -hmm. young men made it very clear, and some of them are not so young, that these people were corrupt. They were not trying to break the French stranglehold on their country. Their people are living in poverty and begging while the wealth of their com country is enriching France, and these leaders were doing nothing about it. They were left without any options. <sighs> They were left without any option. And so if the president, if I was that president, I would get up and tell the world the truth, tell them what France had me doing, tell them what I did wrong to my people. I would confess everything. So like, you gonna kill me anyway? Let me just tell you what's up. I'll be singing like a canary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was so afraid of the white man, they'd go to their grave with the white man's secret in their hearts. Damn. Damn. Oh, God. We had the same things going on over here. Yeah. We still do. We got Negroes over here that still scared to call Malcolm X's name. Hey, I, uh, wow. This late in the game, 58 years. You know? Yeah. You See, a lot of people don't remember when Dr. King was alive, the NACP wasn't a big supporter of Doc. Don't study history. Don't get caught up in their little mystery and a little media play that they've done. Mm. Most, many of the black churches did not support Dr. King. That's why he started SCLC. All right? So many of the so-called civil rights organizations, they may have come to this rally, that, but they didn't really support him. And when he's raised up against the war in Vietnam, Almost the few that were still left, they ran away. After he got killed, everybody came singing, come by ya, how much they love him. That wasn't the reality of Doc's life, otherwise he wouldn't have been killed. Yeah. But they would have protected him. Yeah, 100%. But we need to study our own history. We take a person like a Bobby Steele and a Huey Newton and we marginalize them. Yet those young men who led the Panther Party transformed America. 
in the urban ghettos. The very food program now that's feeding much of America was their concept and their ideas. Exactly. Many of the health service program that's in place now was those young people's ideas, those young men and women who've been marginalized by the same criminal elements that have been controlling black socialization here in America. They control the music industry, they control the movie industry, they control the education in our community. You understand? They control any facility that would allow us to present a cultural presentation of ourselves. So we have to make cultural compromise that would please them when we can't even get a theater rented. That's why when I was at City College for 16 years, I ran a 400 seat theater called the Aranau. I wouldn't let a union in there. And it was the blackest thing in town. So they had to get rid of me. You know what they did the first day they got rid of me from Finley Center? They ripped out the lights and the flyers and everything out of the theater. Yes, they did. Yeah, that's crazy. To show how vicious they felt that I let an instrument stay there for the use of black people to express themselves in any way they want. Yeah, yeah, that that um that theater doesn't it, it I mean it's 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 okay, but it it lacks soul. Um yeah. Yeah, it's it's missing. Yeah, and I didn't. I was really that was crazy when you told me that you you were actually in charge of that um, theater. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I know how to be invisible for sixteen years. Mm. Walk around in my sneakers and my jeans and my little locks, but I was the boss. Yes. yes. You didn't do nothing at City College if it didn't come past me. When the president got his mail in the morning, I had already read all of it. Because those black women knew how to take care. Of business. Mm. So before any mail went on his desk, copies were on my desk. Yeah, yeah, City College. Oh, let's see. All right, Brother Bell. Yeah. You see, who, who you? We, oh. had, we had fun at that city. We gave Black people a world mm. to be themselves in, you know. So let's come back to the okay. happy right now. Happy's got a tour leaving here on the 16th. Yes, February. yes. Let me get another little picture up. Of February, going to Kemet. But we're not just going to Kemet. We're not just going to look at a pyramid. We're not just going to go into a tomb. That would be just enough, because when you walk into those tombs, oh my God, when you see what our ancestors left for us to learn from, when you go into those museums, and I give the devil credit, for his preservations in the museums. You know, I give him credit, even though he does it for money. That, that's cool. But you've preserved an extraordinary part of our history and culture. Yeah. And this has nothing to do so much with gloating and, and, and bolstering. This had to do with here are the instruments and the tools for learning how to be a civilized being here is the, the information that will show you how to become a sacred living thing again. Because the deprivation that the shallowness of Western education has allowed to parade as intellect is sickening. Mm. What masquerades as intellect a high culture in America and Europe would not even be considered kindergarten in ancient Kemet. Not even be considered kindergarten in ancient Kemet. And yet they're masquerading as rulers of the world because they've got a gun or a missile or poison or bacteria warfare that can intimidate people into submitting to their ignorant selves. Yeah, you know, um, I, you, when when uh, last time we went, we had um, actually the last two times Infudishi came with us, and one of the things he said, you know, we 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 had a prayer before we went in, and then he also talked about like these are our libraries, like we're going to learn. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and he he was very clear about that, you know, in terms of, you know, what you know how we were supposed to conduct ourselves, you know, in our libraries, what we you know what we were looking at. Um, and there's something that's going to happen to your spirit. 
Mm-hmm. There's something that's going to happen to your soul. And it's different for every single individual. When you go to Africa, and especially when you go to Kemet, the spirit, the, first, there's two things occurring, and I want to make sure I get people to know this. When you go to Kemet or to Africa for the first time, you take all of your, what you think to be the energy clusters that you call your dead ancestors over here, you take them back home. You abrogate the slave trade. It's over for them. You take them back home in you. you got to be conscious that you're doing that. And when you make a trip from here to Africa, you're taking ancestors who went through the genocide of slavery back home. They go home as a part of the energy that is you. And you deposit them there. They're free now because you make this journey back. And then you get to meet those who never left Africa and have a spiritual conversation. Mm. And only you can realize it and feel it because it happens in your understanding over time. So it's not just going for picture taking or even for political reasons or even for economic reasons, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. So when we understand (coughs) that we are the ancestors, when I go to Africa, my ning is already there. She over here laughing. Boy, why don't you bring your ass home? Why are you going back to America? Because I got some more I got to put on my back and I got to bring home to y'all. And they're going back home with me. We're flying on a jet plane. They're not in a slave ship anymore. But I tell everybody who's flown to Africa, stand up and look back. Don't it look like the slave ship, those airplanes we're sitting on? Don't it look like you're in the slave ship? Except you're going back home. Think mm-hmm. about it. Stand up and look back and see what you see. Especially at night when everyone is asleep. And it'll blow your mind. Yeah. It'll blow your mind. But the key thing is, we still, the world is eternal. It has no beginning. It has no end. There's not even a postulation of a possibility of a beginning or an end in anything that is reality. So we are forever. We are forever becoming. And so your becoming is fueled by your understanding of your ancestral experiences. Your becoming is fueled by your understanding of your ancestral experiences. Someone asked a question about Freemasonry. Freemasonry is nothing more than a body of knowledge of what we are talking about, of Africans, sacred science, that Mm -hmm. Europeans had taken out of Africa and used to inform and educate their elite. Don't get caught up on the rituals and the password and the signal, the symbols. Behind all of that is simply the knowledge of Kemet. That's all it is. Behind all of that and all of these large and secret societies, what they are hiding is the wisdom of Kemet that they have transferred to their elites so that they can rule the world having an understanding of how to organize the human family and how to disorganize the human family. And that's what they're doing. And I should know, I am a Freemason. But I was free before I became a Freemason. I went to the Freemason to tell them I may decide whether they're free or not. Mm. <laughs> so what are they going to say? I remember when I was coming in, one of the, one of the grandmasters, past masters, said to me, um, why do you want to come here? I said, well, I'm, 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 I want to be make a good man better. That's what your words say. He said, no, 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 no. Why do you want to come? I said, well, my sons are here, and I want to come and make sure they're properly educated. And they said, well, and I said, well, what are you worried about? Well, we're worried about you giving away our secrets. Uh, if it's a secret, how did I get it? <laughs> you worry about me giving away a secret I hadn't even had access to yet, you know. 
Oh God, that's the point. The point. The point is, don't don't give those institutions any more latitude uh, than they have. They're simply res reservoirs or repositories of African wisdoms that is in the hands of the European elite and some black elite that have been allowed access to it. Nothing more. The wisdom of the universe is African sacred science. The wisdom of the universe, ecology and cosmology is African sacred science. That's what white secret society is holding so dearly. That that's how they educate their elite to manage the world. Mm. And they have the knowledge to organize and disorganize. Mm. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, we, back we, to trip to Africa. First, you have to get on board. Yes, the trip. But I want to ask you a couple more questions before we get off. Um, mm -hmm. So wait, what are your thoughts on Julius Malema? He's a young brother that's trying to move South Africa in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We got to look at what's going on in South Africa. When Nelson Mandela and the others negotiated the shift in government, they didn't negotiate any wealth to support an undergirt government. So all the whites who were controlling all of the mines still control all of the mines. They didn't give one single mine or a certain percentage of any mineral revenue to run the state, right? Mm -hmm. And now the state's gonna have to depend on tax revenues from people who are barely employed. Secondly, the majority almost 75% of the worthy farmland was left in the hands of the white South Africans. And most of the white South Africans that live outside of the urban center of South Africa live in small towns that they run just as they ran apartheid. The black better not be caught in there when the sun goes down. And if you don't work in the area, you can't be in there at all. Mm. So much of South Africa where the whites live is still run as it was during apartheid. They have their own separate government. And it's obvious they have their own separate banking system so that the wealth of the mines and the agriculture in South Africa is not being shared by the government that's being run by the ANC. It is a fantasy of a democracy that never was. So, and then one other little thing mm -hmm. to try and make what they do have work you need an energy sector that makes sense you can't have your energy grid down nine hours a day when there's no electricity in certain parts of the country yeah and this has been going on for much of two years now yeah yeah i have a couple of south african friends and it's okay. yeah so, those are just some of the undergirding problem, but then the rest of the problem is an ANC who went to bed with Western imperialism at the time the agreement to let Nelson Mandela out of jail. And they participated in the destruction and the assassination of the leadership of the PAC, the Pan-African Congress, that was being carried out by the Israeli Mossad, the South African secret police and the Americans. And so ANC got some ghosts in their closets that need to wake up. Mm. So, you know, speaking of um, the ANC, I'm well, South Africa. Um, so can you give us some, um, some insight on the economic freedom fighters and the African National Congress of South Africa? Well, those are terms. I don't know if there are any economic freedom fighters. Mm. I like Lamine Lawima and what he's talking about. The only way South Africa is going to be able to recover, they're going to have to renegotiate the arrangement for agricultural land. In the same way Mugabe was trying to do in Zimbabwe, and the West turned on Mugabe, they're going to turn on him because the white folks control almost 90% of the farmland of South Africa. How in the world, a country that is predominantly agricultural, is going to develop an economic foundation 
if your enemy is controlling your land. Whites control 100% of the mineral resources of South Africa, not the government. So how are you going to build an, econ an economics, an economy mm -hmm. that's not a welfare state? And that's what South Africa has become, pretty much. You haven't changed anything in the ghettos from the time apartheid ruled them. You now just become the new policeman ruling the ghettos of, mm -hmm. of Johannesburg. I know how harsh that sounds, and I don't mean any disrespect to my brothers and sisters in South Africa, but Winnie Mandela tried to tell y'all, and you turn on your queen mother to dance with white people. To dance with white people. You turn on your queen mother to dance with white people. You allow Nelson to throw her out like she was trash, without whom there would have been no Nelson Mandela. You know, so you got some stuff to make up for just at the spiritual level. Mm. You know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we hear a lot of rumors about the role of Fidel Castro um, played in terms of like ending apartheid in South Africa. Did Cuba send fighters there to help? Cuba, Fidel Castro, El Comandante, is one of the greatest revolutionaries that ever lived. Ernesto Che Guevara, is one of his partners. When, when Patrice yeah. Lumumba was killed mm -hmm. in the Congo, and Lumumba's followers and fighters was fighting against the Americans, the Belgians, the French, and the British. Fidel Castro dispatched Ernesto Che Guevara to the Congo to lead the Lumumbatistas, to lead Lumumba's forces against the West. How many people know that? When SWAPO, who was the liberating force fighting in Namibia, mm -hmm. was taken on the army of South Africa and the Portuguese in Angola, much of their fighting was led by black Cuban generals that Fidel Castro sent along with Cuban soldiers. And I remember a white man asked Fidel this, yeah, why did you send them there to fight in Africa? He said they went home to fight beside their brothers and sisters. Mm. He was very clear about who he was. He didn't, he wasn't confused in his ethnicity because he spoke Spanish. <laughs> I love it. He wasn't confused. He wasn't confused. You know? And so his troops and his <laughs> fighters, and there was another man in the 60s in Mozambique in Angola and Namibia helping to train the guerrilla fighters. You know what that man's name was? Who? Putin. You know? Yes, Mr. Putin was one of the persons that the government of the Soviet Union sent to Africa to help train the guerrilla fighters who was fighting against Portuguese, America, France, Belgium, and, and South Africa. So history will erase a lot of mystery. One hundred percent. You know, you you have a um you you did a class. Somebody said you had a class on this. Maybe it's I on did. the. I need to watch I, it. I did some. I did a piece on Fidel. I think it's pretty good. You can find it on YouTube. Yeah, Fidel, yeah, right, right there. Je Jesse Johnson from the UK. Look, props up to Jesse. Go Jesse, ahead, brother Jesse. <laughs> yeah, Jesse has been on it every single thing before you. Yeah. Like right after you said, or, or he yeah. said it right after. Like you guys are in tandem right here. Yeah. Um, and 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 um, Enyomo, who became the first president of Namibia. Mm -hmm. When the whole world was trying to find him, the FBI was trying to snuff him. He was being hit out in Brooklyn by Bubadika Sunny Carson and the members of the, 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 the black movement in Brooklyn. And when he became president of Namibia after SWAPO won, one of the first things that Yoma did was to come to New York and thank the African-Americans who saved his life, who hit him out. And he's still alive. A friend of mine went to visit him from Ethiopia last year and sent a photograph of him and her standing in his living room and he's in good health. He's no, you know, he's no longer president now, his term ended. But there was a lot going on. At City College, 
I took 65 SWAPO students and gave them full scholarships. Wow. Under the agreement that you will go back home to Namibia when you graduate. And every one of my students did. So there's a lot going on in the movements, you know, that people didn't see. Right? Yeah. Um, and Fidel Castro, come back to Fidel, though. If it wasn't for the Cuban army, we would not have won in Angola. We would not have won in Namibia. And surely, we, if it wasn't for the Soviet Union and the training of Putin, we would not have won in Mozambique. So these things our people need to know. So when people try to play game about Russia this, Russia that, yeah, there's some issues with any nation who's assisting you. There's nobody does nothing for nothing. Everybody wants something in return. The question is the equitability of what the return is going to be. Yeah. And you should be willing to pay for anything that you get. But it should be an equitable exchange. And I think the Soviets and the Chinese are offering relatively equitable exchanges to Africa compared to what Britain, France, America, Germany are offering. And Belgium. Yeah. So, you know, this is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like link these together, but not really. Um, if family, make sure you are liking and subscribing to um, uh, to the channel. We're almost up to 40,000 subscribers. We know that you guys, you know, watch us and thank you, thank you, thank you for that. But we need for you guys to subscribe and hit that notifications button. Okay. Um, and also, listen, I, I just got to be, before we go on to that, you just got two more questions, um, Professor. Mm -hmm. Before we go on to this um, uh to this next, um, this next thing, I got to give a special shout out to David Joseph Murphy. Okay. And I'm saying his whole entire name because when I met him, he's, he's traveled to Egypt with us twice. Okay. Mm. And when I tell you, he has been a sponsor of our event, um, our happy day of black excellence, but this brother has bought, I think he's bought one of everything in our happy store. And yeah. um, if we don't support ourselves, no one else will. Exactly. And like I this is, our people to support exactly. the happy movement, to yeah. support the happy store. Um, we buy things for our family all the time, t-shirts, hats, other gifts. Buy a happy gift. Yeah. And you'll be happy that you <laughs> bought a happy gift. And plus, you don't know, listen. <laughs> and I'm putting you look, I'm on the serious that. side. You know, yeah. You know, I, I I put I'm the one that packed the bags. I always put a little extra something something in there for y'all. You know, especially right now because we really appreciate. I don't. I think you know sometimes people you know like they have merchandise or whatever and they're like, oh, thank you. But no, 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 no. Taki and I, we really appreciate when you guys show up for us because you know we you know we were chosen to do this it's not like we just said hey we want to do this we were specifically chosen to do what we're doing right now. And well, another one of my magic women. I'm gonna steal this man. Yeah, you're gonna they steal got chosen in my basement. I'll you were chosen. I was chosen. No, see, I wasn't chosen in your basement. But you had to come to the basement before you could become a part of the chosen crew. You know, you're right. Absolutely. But I, you know, because I just think about it, like I was just living my just regular little black life in Harlem. Uh -huh. And then you bumped <laughs> you know? into me and changed and everything. <laughs> And then one day I, I saw this man filming and we started talking. He's talking about some Egypt trips. And I was like, let me just go to this little Egypt trip. And he's telling me about Hoppy. And then, then the first time I met you and I was like, oh, my God, because remember, you were yelling. You was actually yelling at me in your, in your living room. I mean, if you want to get technical, Professor, yes. you know, you yes, was yes. yelling at me because you, you probably asked deserved me. it. Yes. And now. But back then I didn't know. But back, mm -hmm. I, you asked me a question. You like, what do you consider you? You know, what, what do you call you, or, or something like that? And I was like, I'm black. And you, oh God, you just you put a whole foot in my, yeah. in my, you know what? And so, um, so yeah. So family, listen. So when you guys like, you know, support us, and we really appreciate that. When you guys show up to our events and you have your gear on, we're like, yes. And you know, when you come on the trips with us, or you, you know, show up at the conferences. We are mm -hmm. so like you guys are happy to see us, but we like more happy to see y'all. <laughs> so, the, the other thing we should tell you know. everybody who goes on the trip, mm -hmm. who watch these events like what we're doing tonight, who buy the happy paraphernalia and the gear, teach somebody. Teach somebody. Tell them yeah. what these symbols represent. Tell somebody in your family or your friends 
what your trip was about. Tell them what you learn and what you understand. Everybody yeah. won't understand, but that's cool. You're not trying to convert them. You're just telling them, let me tell you what I just experienced. Just like somebody can sit down and say, you know, I went to the Knicks game the other night, blah, 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 blah. I went to the Mets game, blah, blah. Okay, you can say, I went to the happy trip to the Nile Valley. Let me tell you what's up. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened to me. <laughs> you can't you tell know, everything that happened on the Nile trip, but what you're able to tell is we've had many people fall in love on these trips and got married after these trips and some yes. people have to, it to get married. But the, the wisdom that you learn, share it with others when you come back. Write something, write, write chronicles, write a pamphlet, yes. write something on your Facebook page, write something on your Instagram. Put your pictures up. Show people the beauty of what you've seen. And that makes you an extension of the movement itself. And it expands the movement. Yes. And more people. And, you know, um, you, you, you hit something right on the, on, the, um, on the head. When, you know, in terms of, like, family, you know, I was telling somebody, you know, like, this trip, you know, I brought my kids. They were, um, like, 15 and uh, 18, I think, at the time, or 15 and 17, or, uh, around that age. I bought mm. both, both of them. And there was plenty of other kids on the trip. There were single people who came. There were married people, you know, that came on the trip. But the minute you get to JFK, that's where we leave out of. The minute you get there, you are like family. And it's just like, it just automatically happens. Everyone automatically looks out for you, you know, and we, we it's this bond. And then even when we come back, like the cool thing about it, I'm so amazed when there's like people who are still talking because they went on this trip with us. When we were at the African um, Street Festival in Brooklyn, and thank you for coming by our tent, yay. Um, you, there was a young brother that came and he was like, I think he he came, he went on the trip with Taki when he was like six or seven years old. And so, you know, he was like, and now this was like a man, like he was like 19. And he was like, yo, like I remember that trip, it changed my life. And so, you know, when we're like talking about this stuff, this this is real, um, you know, it's real. It, it's real. So listen, family, you can definitely, and shout out to Paula, um, uh, up in Boston. She's like, she's going to see you on Thursday. You going to Boston on Thursday? Yeah, I'm speaking, um, at 4 PM to 8 PM at, at Roxbury community college. Okay. It's going to be okay. a fantastic speech on Garvey and oh, the of Garvey okay. and his work and his history. Um, so we had, and, and they're playing up big. Somebody told me they got lots Signs on people's lawns saying, Brother Small is coming. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking so about. We're going to have a beautiful time at 4 p.m. On, on, on the 17th at Roxbury Community College in Boston, Massachusetts. And, you know, I lived in Boston for much of 11 years when I was mm -hmm. uh, Malcolm Sistella's security and the imam of Muslim Mosque. So Boston is kind of like a second home. And so this is kind of home going kind of thing. For me, a lot of friends and comrades will be there at, at this lecture. Okay, that's what's up. So you know what? I have to um this right here. Um Samel, beloved of Sophia, has put this in the chat like three times because I I, I think they think I'm gonna forget to ask this question, but let me ask this question now before we move. Who, on. who is it? Um Samel right here. Samel, beloved of Sophia. Okay, so they want you to explain Egypt's version of Freemasonry, Masonry, the Egyptian mysteries. Well, there is no Egyptian version of Freemasonry. Mm. Freemasonry is the European version of aspects of the body of wisdom that was taught in the universities of Kemet. And that body of wisdom that gave you basic understanding of, of how to become a human being. You know, when you join Freemasonry up from the West, mm -hmm. they ask you, why have you come? You say, I come to make a good man better. How do you make a good man better? You put through a number of rituals that has to do with character development. It's all about developing the character, character of the human being teaching him about the true essence of the divine that is within and not without. Um, the things that they hold secret are the things we talk about all the time, but because we don't value 
the way we should, the body of information that Dr. Ben and all those who have followed have given to us. We think we don't have anything because we go to Kemet, but we still come back and go to the mosque. We go to Kemet, but we still come back and we go to the church. Well, you need to stop and ask yourself the fundamental questions. Where and when does transformation take place, right? Where and when does transformation take place as a result of the new body of information? That's what masonry does. It brings someone from this position of ignorance to a level of understanding of how the world and the universe works and how the transformation of human character should take place in terms of learning new qualities and attributes that help to create the God-man, if you want to put it in that sense. What you ask a question that I'm not allowed to collaborate on. Around the neck, I'm wearing a necklace. Oh. You can't see it because this is the necklace that tells you that I'm a high priest of the craft of Amun Ra at the shrine of Hunefa and what you refer to as the craft. Well, if the body of information was just given away, but we would have a problem because that's been the problem. People got tiny little pieces of something and don't know how it connects up. There yeah. is a process of learning. There's a process of understanding if you want to transform the mind, transform the character, transform the behavior, and transform your society. There's a process and there's steps. There's steps. You don't get to step two until you master step one. You don't get to step three until you master step two. What a lot of people have done in Western society, so let me learn what's on step six or seven. Mm -hmm. And then I act like I know something. Without a foundation. Right. Yeah. You can know something, but if you can't become what you know, you don't know nothing. <laughs> you know what? It, 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 exactly. So, yeah. But yeah. the question of Freemasonry, take it out of the mystery. All Masonry is in the West is a society of secrets. It's not a secret society because you know about it. It is a society of secrets. What are the secrets? The educational system of ancient Kemet. That's the secret. Mm. I'm going to put up with something about George G.M. James' book, A Stolen Legacy. I would advise everyone to buy a copy of Stolen Legacy and read it. Yes. Uh, James go a long way into explaining many of the aspects of our body of knowledge that the West took and claimed to be Greek and claimed to be Roman. Mm. But it's all of the body of knowledge that we're talking about is how does nature work? How does the universe work? How should the human being work in regards to nature and the rest of the universe? How do we build a family? How do you build a personality? How do you build a character? How do you build a neighborhood? How do you build a community? How do you build a nation? What are the quality and attributes of a nation? What is the quality and attributes of a community? What is the quality and attributes of a neighborhood? What is the quality and attributes of a family? What are the quality and attributes of an individual? Mm. And from whence do you derive the knowledge of these qualities and attributes? That's all voodoo is about. Yoruba, I'm a priest of the Yoruba. But Yoruba is a people the tradition is called Ifa. Ifa means the wisdom of the universe. The mm -hmm. wisdom of yes. the universe. That's what we're trying to get back to so that we can build. See, those people who ran to help the young man in Alabama, mm -hmm. they were responding appropriately, even though they may not have known it. But the, 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 the experiences and the struggle and the information of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and 90s, that, and even some that hip hop helped to bring to the air of the young got embedded in their consciousness and they knew what to do. 
They what, knew it. it's we in our DNA. Do that in a scientific process. Yeah, it's in so our we DNA. All knew what to do? We all. They. It's. It's like they couldn't have coordinated it any better. Right. <laughs> Down to the different cam camera angles. How? Just. I mean. So it comes back to the simplicity of what I was saying. You are your ancestors. Yes. But you can't just say that now. You got to then now study. You got to study you. Look in the mirror. Get butt naked. Take up all your clothes. Look at your out of shape body or your in shape body. Stand in front of that mirror. And start asking yourself some serious ass questions. Ask the question of you about you and what you need to do about you to change yourself physically, to change yourself spiritually, to change yourself intellectually. Look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. That's the greatest teacher you will ever meet and the only God you will ever know. Absolutely. You don't understand Absolutely. that yet. Absolutely. But you don't understand that yet, even though you may be able to say it. Yeah. To understand that you've got to become it. Yeah. So and you know, that you got to become it. And you have to become it. And that's no joke. It's no joke to become it. That means every time you do something, every time you think something, when you, you know, you have to really got to think about it before you do it. Well, that's why the knowledge is essential. Yeah. GM James's book is essential. Yeah. Dr. Ben's book, Black Man of Denial and His Family. When you first read it, you go like, what's this guy talking about? And then you relax and you see an old man mm -hmm. took the deepest wisdom and made it very simple. Yeah. And then you won't let it fly over your head. You'll get it. You'll get it. James's book is to the point they assassinated him for putting that knowledge out at that time. But now that knowledge is everywhere. But James's book is sitting there gathering dust because you don't know where to look. Mm. So don't let him have died for nothing. Yeah. He died to get that body of knowledge to us. Yeah. And even that's... what James gave us was just the sprinkle. That's why we've got to still go back to Kemet. There's so much more to learn. Yeah. There's so much more to see. We need as many eyes as possible and as many minds as possible to understand and explain to the rest of us. Yeah. 100. And I'll give you a good example that I'll set up. And I like somebody if to, to disprove what I'm saying. Astrology. No one's going to disprove you. They'll time. <laughs> Astrology is an explanation of astronomy made by the sacred scientists for the knowledge of the masses. Say that again. Mm -hmm. Astrology is the information put together by the sacred scientists about astronomy in order to educate the masses who don't have time to sit around watching any damn stars and constellation all day. Yeah. But they need the body of wisdom in order to run their lives and understand their relationship to cosmology and ecology. So astrology explains to the masses astronomy in a useful manner for the population to be engaged with a body of wisdom that they didn't have time to consume mm -hmm. on their own. That's just one piece of our great system that yeah. we can begin to try and learn and understand. Just one piece. That's what's up. Family, um, make sure uh, that you are um, liking and subscribing to the page. Um, and uh, Make sure that you know that you guys are following us on YouTube and that you actually hit that little bell, the notifications button. That way, you know, when we go live and stuff like that, you guys are like right there. You know exactly what we're doing all the time. All right. Yes. Um, and do if you get ready and go on the trip. There's 80 you million get, of us. You so at least 1 million of you should sign up. So if 1% yeah. of 1% of 1% of the 1 million that should sign up, sign up, so you know, that'll be a beautiful thing. Listen, if it's going to be the 1% of the 1%, we have about three quarters of that boat is already filled. So we got That's a quarter left. Right. So, yep. So I'm telling and, you. If, and there's nothing more beautiful than taking that boat down the mm -hmm. night. I remember when I first did it, I go like, 
It's beautiful. I don't know if I'm not like this because I was used to hitting the road and the bus and the <laughs> dust, right? Or flying. It but so nice. to come in after a day's work in the field, visiting all of these sacred places, mm -hmm. to take a shower, get dressed, and go to dinner together, and realizing you're already moving from point A to point B, so the next morning you can tour another site. And you yeah. can have your own little disco night if you want to, as we did. Oh, yeah, we know. We're about to turn that boat out. Yeah, because um, we, we got it by ourselves. Um, we got yeah. it by ourselves, Professor. And, and we have, and I keep forgetting, we keep forgetting to talk about the Happy Dinner Gala. We got a whole um, gala that we're going to do over there. And I'm not going to mention who's turning 50. I ain't saying nothing, but you guys got to come to see because somebody's turning 50 in February. Wow. Okay. And that's going to be fire because we're going to have a little gala. You get dressed up, you know, a little linen party. So we're going to be mm -hmm. kicking it. So we're going to be like, I'm telling you, it's like Tom Joyner meets history. That's what type of event this is going to be. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be a, it's a beautiful thing. And it's going yeah. home. And remember, you're taking your ancestors mm -hmm. who suffered on those slave ships, who had to suffer through slavery in America, who had to yeah. suffer through the genocide of Jim Crow in America. You're taking them back home. Did and when I say them, because I don't want you to get confused, because I said you're your ancestors, now I'm saying you're taking them. Each yeah. part of your existence, you create an energy conglomerate. Yes. Each time you existed, you created an energy cluster. And that's what you're taking back home. Yeah. And this body and this carnation or incarnation I'm in, I'm creating another kind of energy cluster, different from the one I created when I was my father and my mother. Yes, it was me who was my grandparents and my great grandparents. And now I'm me again, creating another energy cluster, which is made up of fragments of all those other clusters, which either depreciate me if I'm into ignorance or expand me if I'm into knowledge. Yeah. And it is those clusters that have had all these experiences that you're taking back home to be free. Mm, I love that. So, it, okay, we I, one more question because um, this this the, the person in the chat is like um, I think Dr. Patel might be he might be talking trash over here. I'm going to get to your question, Dr. Patel. I, we got a lot of things we got to discuss over here. All right, he he. No, has, let's get to Dr. Patel's question. Yeah, we got to get to his question. Um, <laughs> and we are not holding. We do not. You do not have to pay us to um to uh, ask questions, Dr. Patal. Okay, so Dr. Patal and and shout out to Michael Imhotep. I saw him up in the chat too. You know, hey, brother that, Michael. That, yeah, Michael. Is, yeah, that's is, the African history man right there. That's the historical holy man. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Um, okay, let me find Dr. Patal's question because I don't want him to come get me. Well, I was hoping that, brother Michael. Yeah. Um, Okay, wait. See, I, I keep finding Dr. Patal saying I'm not asking none of his questions. There it is, right there. Was P Professor, were you there in Kemet when Asa Hilliard moved um, from uh, moved forward to the ancestors? Were you there? No, but that's the story you need to tell. I need to tell. I was in Ghana, <clears throat> and I was with Asa two weeks before. Okay, he was also in Ghana, and I think the last week we had dinner together in a, in a reception that he had for his people at the uh, hotel in Elmina. Uh, Dr. Jeffries, him and myself. And the last time I saw him, he was buying something for one of his grandchildren in the Cultural Arts Center. And he told me he was going home to pick up his wife and they would go to Kimmy. And so Dr. Jeffries and my partner, Sister Leah and myself was working on our hotel in Cape Coast. So I stayed back to work on the hotel and Dr. Jeffries and Sister Leah went on to Kemet. And I came into town, into Accra, and uh, my tour partner uh, from Sunseeker, Kwame Ansan, came rushing out the door and he's crying. And when I pull up to the office, 
he comes rushing on and he's crying. And you know, my first thing, because this is how I stay in touch with my home. So I thought, oh my God, something happened to my wife or to my children or to somebody in America. And I said, Kwame, what is wrong? What's, what's happening? He said, we just lost Baba Asa last night. Mm. And wow. And so it took me two weeks because I had overstayed my time in, um, in Ghana. So I had to buy a new ticket and actually, and I wanted to go to Kemet to come home and I had to actually pay a thousand dollars for this ticket so that I could go to Kemet because I wanted to pay tribute and pour libation. Wow. So when I got into Kemet that night, I was with a Ghanaian intelligence officer who was failing me and I discovered him and we got it together. And I go like, listen, I don't care who you work for. We hanging out. And then we met some students who was on the way to Moscow going back to school. And we all got a cab driver somehow to find a little store in Cairo, bought two pack, two six packs of Heineken beer <laughs> in the middle of the night from some Muslim guy. And we get in this cab and he takes us to a village because you know, they close off the pyramid. They close the gates and everything, right? Mm-hmm. So we get on some horses and some camel and go out in the desert and come in through the back. And we up on the sand dunes, overlooking the pyramids, pouring libation to Baba Asa. Mm. That was my tribute. Mm. 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 So, you know what? Um, because we're talking about Asa Hilliard, um, mm-hmm. two things. So tomorrow, um, family, um, is August 16th, and that's actually Dr. Renoko Rashidi's birthday. So we're mm-hmm. going to be putting a lot of things up on our, um, our YouTube, I mean, our social media to to honor him. Um, but also, um, can you talk a little bit about Minister Clemson Brown? I will say before oh. you, be, yeah, before you start to talk, I just want to say this, that there's going to be a memorial service for um, Minister Clemson, Clemson Brown on September 23rd at 2 p.m. at the House of the Lord Church, mm-hmm. which is at 415 Atlantic Avenue. Okay. And um, I will get um, some more information up while you're talking about him. Yeah, Clemson and I started City College together. We were freshmen together. We go back to 1968. Um, He was into film then. He's one of the founders of the organization called SANE at City College, the student media service there. Um, We've been friends ever since. Mm -hmm. Clemson filmed all of the first world, all of the slave theater, all of the, the, the African movement led by Sharpton and uh, Alton Maddox. He probably have the largest collection of historical lectures of black scholarship of anybody in the world. Wow. And I hope that the family is able to preserve that extraordinary collection, which he was trying to digitize at the time he got sick. Mm-hmm. And he had worked for years to edit them and he was gracious enough to give me most of my um, masters a few years ago. Um, but we spent a lot of years in his basement filming, uh, going through tapes. Um, a lot of times at his kitchen table where his wife was fixing food for us because we had been in that basement all day. Um, he liked to eat cake. He loved sweets. Mm. And so... A lot of time around the dining room table, a lot of the film I did with him was him and I in that dining room. One in the living room, because he had a, a large collection of African artifacts, art and carpets. He was an extraordinary young man. He got into media very young and he stayed in it all of his life. Um, he's my homeboy he's from South Carolina. He's a Gullah Geechee man like myself. Oh, okay. So the body has now been returned to South Carolina for burial. And the memorial, as you said, will be on the 23rd at the House of the Lord Church. He was a very beautiful, dedicated soldier. He was leading the team and filming everything that happened around Sister Tawana Brawley. He was filming when Brother Diallo was killed from Guinea, shot to death by the policeman. He was filming, I can't remember a funeral or a memorial where we were running through the street, holding onto the hearse, carrying the body of our own comrades, and he wasn't there filming. 
and keeping that record for us. He was the extraordinary record keeper using film. And just a beautiful personality, just a beautiful, soft character, just the kind, always laughing, always smiling. When Dr. Barbara Justice and others had gone to Kenya years ago to look at interferon as a cure for AIDS, he was there filming them and he was there with them. Um, when me and Dr. Jeffries made a major pilgrimage um, to Africa, to, that became the founding pilgrimage for Emancipation Day in Ghana. He was there filming us when we took the body um, of Samuel Carson, an enslaved African that had been in the ancestor realm for nearly 300 years. When we took that back to Ghana, he filmed all of it. He filmed the exhumation of the bones. We just went through a lot of stuff together in our lifetime. You, you know, um, uh, Taki just texted me that he actually filmed the first annual Nubian summit in Boston, the one that, you know, that was in Roxbury. Yeah. Yeah, he was always there. He filmed the entire trial of Dr. Jeffries when he was fighting wow. against that whole uh, piece um, uh, uh, with being called an anti-Semitic. Um, he traveled with us all over the country. We did, we were doing a tour me and a couple of brothers and sisters called Sojourn South. And we took a bus tour from New York to the Civil Rights Museum in Memphis to Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, and looking at historical sites to landing in New Orleans um, for the jazz festival and spending the day in, in Congo Square and then took the bus back across Florida and up into Georgia and South Carolina, visiting the Gullah Geechee culture. And he filmed every single day of that two week tour by bus through the South. It's called Sojourn South. I, mean, he, I know he has so much record of the work that we did through the years to try and educate our people. Um, God bless his soul. May he have a safe journey home. Yes, within welcome. the transitional journey. It takes 40 days, the ancestors said, to reunite with the cosmology out of which we became. So he's on his journey. I got back from Africa on Monday, the morning that he passed. And um, I'd been trying to reach him for two or three weeks because I know he wasn't feeling well before I went to Africa. And so he did his job. He did an extraordinary job through the years. And you can go on YouTube and see a plethora of his work. It's called yeah. Transatlantic Productions. So anything yeah, you see somebody put that up. Yes. Yeah, I feel like somebody put that up early um, early on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Thank you for that, Professor. Yes. Thank you. So Brother Brown, so safe journey back home. Travel well. Tell the ancestors that we still need help down here. So when they send you back as your grandchild or your great grandchild, however, give you a little bit more tools than you had this time. Mm. We still have work to do. Peace and blessing. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sister Felicia. And remember right. people, get on board. 16th February to 25th February. Right Move there. with happy toward the Nile, have fun, and then learn, and become spiritually imbued, rebirth yourself again. Yeah. That's what this trip will allow you to do. Wait, wait, wait. You said some, well, you said some good. You said uh, a couple of things. Learn how to be African again. Mm -hmm. You also said that this will be a journey in the subconsciousness, no, in the subconscious of, the, of African ancestry. Mm -hmm. And if you don't change your mind, you can't change your behind. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So family. Hello you know, to my little grandson, Nasia, and my granddaughter, Malia, Taylor. Both of them, I know they're watching with their mom and daddy, Malik Taylor and Naja Small Taylor. And I'm happy when I know my children is watching me and still learning from me. Mm. And their children learning. So grandpa, I just am. Like I try to teach you all how to just be. Just be. And then I, another one of my 
sisters who's new to the training process, Sister Takia, uh, Nana AC, who just went with us to Ghana. And I know she had a wonderful time. I know she's going to be watching tonight. So Nana AC, I hope you've enjoyed the lecture. I know Brother Charles is usually here with us. I didn't see his name tonight, but um, he's usually here. Yeah. Um, the, um, the, 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 the way of our ancestors is key. There's Naja. Oh, oh, Grandpa, we love you. Is this, wait, is this Naja the one you brought to the African Street Festival last year? Oh, Malia. You mean the little one? That was Malia. Malia. Okay, that was Malia. Okay. Yeah, All Naja right. is her mom. Malia oh. is her daughter. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so nice. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah, they're my people. What's up, Naja? So um, Naja is the chief priestess in the family. Chief Priestess, I like that. Okay. Um, you know what? I think that's it, Professor. You know, um, family, there's a trip. We are going February um, 16th to the 25th. Um, like I said uh, before, you know, like, you know, sometimes when we're like telling you guys, like, yo, you get your tickets now. And, you know, sometimes that sounds like, like a sales ploy, but we're like, no, no, seriously, because get once your tickets now. Yeah, because once we and hit the number, yourself. and the thing about it is like we can't, we don't know what the specific number is because some some people want a single, some people want a double, so it depends. Like if the next ten people get singles or the next people get doubles, it just depends how how many people we can take. So, family, mm -hmm. if you are even remotely interested in going with us, um, February sixteenth to the twenty fifth. Um, head over to our website. You can go to Happy Film or you can go to iCatTours.com and you can get your, um, you know, you can put your deposit in, okay? And, um, you know, we can start. Listen, we have all type of payment plans. You can, we can work that out. Um, we have a happy dinner gala. Um, we're going to um, have uh, J. Mar Milton's gonna be one of our musical performances. We have Dr. Georgina Falou and Dr. David Anderson that will be giving some um, economic classes. We're gonna be selling up the Nile on our own ship. So it's just us on there so we can cut loose and we can do anything we want to because it's just us, okay? Um, and we will be learning about the original constructs of economics right there, the 16th through the 25th family. Um, you have any? You have any words? And thank you again. I'm sorry, uh, Professor. Thank you again for um, for the uh, all the the cash apps. Like I said, it stays in our family. <laughs> it stays in the happy family for more than six hours. You know, we are. Um, you know, we we work with people that look like us. So uh, right there, happyfilm.com. That uh, any, anything that you give us goes a long way. Um, and you really have to believe that. I also want to give a shout out to Ron Spears. I saw him in the um, in the chat. He's also traveled with us to Egypt. Um, Brandon Johnson, he's been getting us up on this um, on social media. Thank you, um, Eldana. All right, Eldana, I love that name. So, Professor, you have anything? You have some lasting words? Because I'm gonna, you can say what you always say because I usually say it when you're not here, but you're here, so I can't really say it. Oh, no. The, the key thing is that the people do go on the trip. Those who want to go, go. Get the deposit in. Yeah, get the you, deposit you in. Give yourself a wonderful gift for the new year. Um, and for those who have heard us tonight and, and who refer to others and tell them about tonight, continue to send in uh, your financial support to Happy so that they can do the work. Uh, that they've been doing. And I know talking to Taki, he's working on coming up with another film um, to expand Happy. Mm -hmm. And so all of that takes capital to bring forward um, yeah. these learning systems to our world. So yeah. thank you very much. Peace and blessings to everyone. Oh, you said it. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> you did. You you stole my thunder. <laughs> I always you I always love you. You, you can say, say it also. No, no, you're kind of like the creator of it, so I can't say it. You know. All right. 
Say it one more time. All right, family, love you guys, and we will see you um, again later on the next installment of Happy Talks. Go ahead, Professor. Peace, Peace and blessings, everyone. Peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our communities?